All right, so we have a vapor compression refrigeration, or I'm sorry, a vapor compression heat pump. Uh, it says it provides 35 kilowatts of heat to a dwelling uh, on a day when the temperature is below freezing. So because I've drawn my, I keep in mind, I've drawn my vapor compression, it looks like a vapor compression refrigeration cycle, and it is, except it's serving to heat a, heat a space as opposed to cool, uh, cool a space. So I've kind of labeled like what my thermal reservoirs are. At the top, I've got my heated space. At the bottom, I've got the cool outdoors where, where the uh, heat is being pulled uh, by the evaporator. So my Q.H is the 35 kilowatts. Um, and then it tells me the pressures, uh, various qualities. Quality is one going into the compressor, uh, coming out of the condenser at zero. Um, and everything else is just kind of put on the, on the diagram there. And I'm supposed to find the mass flow rate, the power input required, and the coefficient of performance for that heat pump. I'm assuming typical assumptions, changes in kinetic energy and potential energy are negligible. Um, and it's steady state. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my governing equations here. My M dot is gonna be found from the only thing on that diagram that gives me anything about the rate. Uh, so it's gonna be Q dot H divided by H2 minus H3. I got that by doing an energy balance on that condenser. My W dot N, do an energy balance on your compressor. So it's gonna be M dot times H2 minus H1. And once you've got M dot, you can figure out what your power input is. And then your coefficient of performance for a heat pump, it's what you're after over what you have to put into it. So what we have to put into it is the W dot N. And what we're after, what we're interested in is heating our house. So it's the Q dot H term that we're actually interested in. So I need to pull off the H values. I do need to go to those uh, uh, SI table uh, or the um, saturated tables for R134A in your book. Um, and uh, so I'm looking in the saturated tables here because I've got a quality of one and I get a uh, value of 237.97 for H1. H2, well, if this is an isentropic compression process, uh, I need to get S2, which is equal to S1. So my S1, 0.92. Nine five, um, and I'm getting that at state one, and it'll be superheated. So you need to go into the superheated tables for R134A and interpolate um, at P3 or P2, which is eight bar. Interpolate for that corresponding H value that corresponds to that uh, that S value. H3, go to your saturated tables once again at eight bar, and H3 and H4 are exactly the same. And then you just plug and chug, get your M dot, W dot, and your COP, and you're all done. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.